Very much for coming to listen to me. Uh, please do use your phones if you want, especially for taking, fo uh, taking photos of me uh, and tweeting about it, like Rediscon for getting ready to wrap up so uh, we can use the nudge in Twitter. Um, so I'm here doing lots of things, and one of them is filling in for lots of developers who couldn't uh, attend for various reasons. One of these guys is named uh, Roy Lipman. He's not here today. He was really, really trying to get here, but for various bureaucratic reasons, he didn't get his visa, by the way, um, he couldn't make it. So I'm in his place, and I hope I can show you all the awesomeness that he prepared for us today. I'm going to talk about Redis, surprise, but I'm going to talk about uh, Redis Labs first. And then I'm going to show you this slide, which is another Redis Lab slide, our sponsor, our host. Thank you. All right, so, and the topic of our um, talk today is actually not just Redis and Redis Labs. We've heard about these guys, right? But we're going to talk about graphs. And graphs, uh, at least one, one definition of a graph, and I'm sure most of you well, I hope most of you are from. How many of you are familiar with graphs, by the way? Sorry. Oh, very good, very good. All right, the few people who didn't raise their hands, you can ask questions, both me and your neighbors, because most of the people here are savvy. But don't feel too bad because graphs are very, very simple. This is the first part of the graph. It's called a node. So a node in a graph is a circle, usually. It's just a way to depict it. And it represents something, an entity in the graph. All right, so that's like 50% into graph theory. <laughs> no, really. <laughs> I've seen the slides. Look, next 50% into graph theory, which will bring us, I think, close to 100, is the notion of edges between nodes. So I have two nodes here. One of them is called Michael. The other one is called Dunder Mifflin. Uh, I don't watch TV, but this, this is actually, I think, a show. The, the star of the show was here earlier, or another show. I think it's the same TV, though. <laughs> um, and the edge between these two nodes this little arrow represents some kind of a relationship. In this example, Michael from the TV series The Office works for his boss, Dunder Mifflin. Let's create a graph. And the thing you're seeing now is a web browser connected to an application, blah, 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 that's actually running a Redis module called Redis Graph. You can use it, you can play with it, you can download it, everything is there. I'm going to show you a brief demo plus some nice visualization. So we are going to create a graph. We need a node in the graph, right? 50% of a graph is a node. So I have your a query, or rather an instruction. The, the modules commands all begin with graph period, and then you get the first command. It's called create node, very uh, uh, easily understandably why. And the example here is actually based on Rui and not the TV series, The Office, because while we can bring uh, the TV series here, we couldn't bring Rui. So here's Rui. Uh, actually, we can look. Ha! I can zoom in. So this is the guy who created Reddit's graph, and I've added a node. Note that the node has been added with a few properties, like the name is Roy E, uh, his age is 32, pretty young, he's a male, and he's married. Uh, let's zoom out a little. Uh, Roy is pretty lonely, so before we go on and to the next 50%, we'll give Roy uh, a few friends to play with, or rather his social network. He doesn't have many friends, but a few. Uh, you can see them floating. And now you can see another thing I tried fixing. Shelly always goes up there. Uh, each one has his own set of properties, right? Like, they're people. So just briefly, what you see now is the create node uh, 
command and we've created a bunch of graph nodes with labels and matching attributes. Just as an FYI, what we do behind the scenes is we store these nodes. We give them a unique ID and store all the nodes in the all node store. Plus, if an optional label is given to a node, we also store it in another store, the label store. So in our example, we can store the nodes, uh, in the slides example, we can store them in the employees store. The attributes that I've been adding, like name, age, and such, uh, are actually added in a Redis hash. So that's also like very accessible if you want them or if you need them. You can access them using the, uh, the regular Redis uh, API. Yeah, I remembered that cue. Left them there, though. Um, next, 50%, we want to connect everyone. Remember, we have edges. We want to show some kind of relationship. In Roy's case, we're going to use the social edges. So uh, we're creating, you're, you're using a new command called add edge. So here, we are creating edges between people. We're adding them to the social edge store, sort of. And we're connecting Roy to his friends. A bunch of commands here. Let's run them. Bam. And everyone's connected. You can see clearly now the thing. Well, not that clearly, but it keeps on moving, by the way. And Shelly is back down here. Someone's hiding above. But you can get the gist of it. We connected people to people to people, and we're seeing all kinds of relationships between them. And here is a recap of what you've just seen. When we do add edge, this is the format or the syntax when you want to use it through Redis uh, client, wherever your, whatever your client is, you just specify the graph's <coughs> name or the edge store name, if you will, the source node, the relation between the two nodes, which is kind of a label, the destination node, and some attributes. You can actually add attributes to edges on the graph. And similarly to what I've shown you earlier about the node store, the same thing happens with edges. We store them in two stores. If a label has been given, we store all these edges in that label too. Now comes the tricky part, or not that tricky actually, but uh, uh, perhaps a less familiar aspect of graph. I totally lied, by the way, uh, earlier when I said we were at 100%. This is like the other percent I wanted to talk about when talking about graph theory or specifically what we do uh, in Redis. The concept is called a hexastore. A hexastore is a way to represent, if you will, a graph database. And it's built on three concepts or three terms or three uh, things, SPO, subject, predicate, object. A hexastore represents a relationship between the subject and an object using the predicate. And basically, it's called a hexastore because there are six combinations, six permutation of these SPOs that you can think of. And each one of them is meaningful, in a sense. So by keeping all of these relations or pre-computing all of these relationships between two nodes and the predicate, the subject, the predicate, and an object, we can get pretty far in the role power and the abilities that we can actually use to query that graph. Let's take an example, because examples work uh, pretty well. So the triplets, the triplets being uh, the subject, predicate, and object, each triplet represents something. So if my subject node is Michael, and Jim is the object node, and the predicate is Michael is the boss of Jim, then any combination has a meaningful uh, question or answer it can provide. So the first trivial thing is SPO, subject, predicate, object. So we can see that Michael is the boss of Jim. But I can also search, for example, if I search for the OPS, I'm just picking one at random because I'm sure you've all read uh, read this slide. This is the one I was like trying to stay on, so you, to give you time to digest it. So, uh, which one did I pick? Never mind. So PSO, boss, Michael, Jim. So I can 
this relationship lets me basically, if I'm trying to search for something uh, meaningful, I can start searching for boss, like asterisk, for example, I'll get all the bosses. But if I'm looking for who's Michael's, who, who's the boss Michael Jim, boss Michael Jim, if I'm looking who's Who's Michael boss of? I can look for boss uh, Colin Michael, and then I can get to the answer. That's Jim. Jim is being bossed by Michael, I guess. This is what my subconscious was trying to warn me about. Um, and here are the questions you can answer about each one of them. Uh, it makes perfect sense once you bend your mind to, to look at it that way. Like, uh, and then we get the demo. And the demo we're going to see now is back to Rui's world. Rui and his seven friends. He actually has more friends, but he trimmed his network, don't worry. He would appreciate the like on Facebook or a friendly tweet on Twitter to, because he's not here, so just let him know how much you appreciate his work. Uh, you'll get his uh, like true thing uh, at the end. Um, so we can ask a lot of interesting questions and hopefully get a lot of boring answers for them. We can, for example, ask who are Roy's friends? We've got a friendship graph, but we're looking for everyone here who is Roy's friend. And here you get to see a new command called graph match. This is basically the search uh, operation or the query operation on the graph. Just noted that, brilliant. Um, the syntax, let's not dwell on it because right now we're looking at the visualization. So executing this basically removes all the uh, remote friends, <laughs> the friends of friends. But we can, of course, also uh, ask the other question, uh, the immediate question, who are Rui's friends of friends? I don't care who are Rui friends. I want to meet these guys who are hanging in the background. So I can basically craft myself this query that lets me do that. And then I can see them. I've seen friends of friends. Actually, it should have shown them better. Next time, next demo, next year. Um, and I can also ask very interesting questions like friends of friends who are single and over 30. Like, and this can be changed like you want to find maybe under 30 or specific ages, of course, but uh, genders. So you can execute that and you can see that Roy has a friend called Elon. These are all, by the way, Israeli names. Uh, uh, so Roy's friend Elon has another friend called Noam. He's over 30 and single. So if you know anyone, Thank you. Let's go back to the slides to cover what we've seen so far because the, the graphs or the circles and nodes are very nice, but we're here for the formal bits, right? Um, graph match, this is like the syntax. It's very, it's very cool. Uh, it's also cool because what uh, Roy managed to pull off here is basically uh, copy, steal, or imitate which is the greatest form of flattery, and this is what every great developer should do, you reuse stuff. Uh, there's a graph database I'm sure you've heard about that it's called Neo4j. The guys invented uh, the cipher language, basically, and made it happen, uh, and re-adopted it, because if it works and everyone knows it, why break it, why try even? Uh, and basically, it supports a very impressive large impressively large subset of the cipher language. Um, even, if not, if it, even if you're not a cipher expert, then you can probably guess what this does. Because for me, and I'm not a cipher expert, it looks like SQL. But it isn't. It's a little different, but very, very similar. So you have your match subplots where you basically give the graph name, which is maybe a table in the old relational world or a data structure in our world. So you give it the graph's name, this is the graph I want to match against, and then you give it some pattern. Then you can specify a where clause, where you actually give filters. I want people who are only 
above the age of 30 and who are single. I can also specify the projection. The projection is the part where I take the answers and I return them to the caller, but I can return them slightly differently. It's a very powerful concept. You'll see that shortly. I can do order, and I can, of course, limit the results to the top whatever. Here's a full, uh, a full query, one of the queries you could use on the graph from our TV office example. So you can uh, perhaps ask, uh, well, what do we want to ask here? Anyone has any idea? Um, match Michael employee. Michael employee. So every employee of Michael's, Scott, who is the boss of, who visited a country. Okay, so we're basically looking for all of Michael's employees, all of the people who Michael bosses, who visited a country. Assuming we have that information in the graph, right? We didn't show putting it in, actually. We gave it uh, the age. The age is bigger than Michael, and the continent in, is Europe. So anyone older than Michael who has ever traveled to Europe. And we want to return, and this is the production part, we want to return specific properties, specific pro parts or uh, compositions of parts, so we select them or filter them or project them back. And then we can order it and just limit our search. In terms of what happens behind the scenes when you throw something like that at Redis Graph, uh, it's pretty much what you expect. We've got a query that comes into a parser. The parser looks at the, at the query and uh, basically asks itself, is that a legit question or not? Uh, once it decides whether it's a legit question, it goes to building uh, what's called an abstract syntax tree. I won't bore you with that and uh, then goes into the execution plan phase. Yes? Yeah, if you back up, am I doing this right? If you back up one slide, uh, is the query processing very generous or flexible about the fields or attributes you're looking for not existing, that's a non-match, but you don't have to be especially careful about whether everything exists or is This is, is the null. part where we wish Roy was here to answer you because he knows the answer, but you have to satisfy with my promise to return back to you on that. If, if I'll know your name and age and, well, gender, I know. <laughs> All right, uh, email something. So catch me later, I'll write down the, that just guessing. So the first part, <laughs> Parsing, we take the query, we tokenize it, we use something called Lex, we didn't invent it, everyone uses it, why build uh, everything from scratch? And then for parsing, we adopted uh, something called Lemon, which is SQL lights thingy, it's a left, look ahead, left, right, one step parser generator thingy. Uh, very efficient, everyone uses it, we're good with that. Like it's it's the reddest off parsers. So, what do we? Why why do we want to even bother? Right? Um, I mentioned the abstract syntax tree. An abstract syntax tree is basically taking the query and breaking it down into some sort of uh, uh, into its components and building the plan or the the, the way it's going to work and. The execution plan part is basically, once we have the abstract syntax tree, we can try and estimate where, how to attack that. And actually, the first version of Redis Graph was very, very naive. We just like ran through everything, not thinking about it, just you know trying to get back the right results and then opening the champagne. But uh, recently, Roy has invested a lot of work into basically baking in what could be called uh, 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 an optimized or, or a query exe uh, 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 execution plan, planner, whatever. <coughs> this, this is not a new concept in databases. Like I've known companies who have invested thousands of many years just doing that, and we're not pretending to be there. But it has some smarts, and it's pretty wicked. Of course, the entire thing is open source. If you have anything to ask us, add to it, please do. Uh, you can actually see that uh, query plan if you use the explain plan um, thing. Here's my query. 
All right, I'm trying to find all of uh, Michael's uh, employees and just return them, the ones who are, of course, uh, older than Michael. Somehow, he is obsessed with uh, age, probably because he's so young. Um, so the query basically returns all of Michael's employees uh, who are older than him. If we throw that into the model that I've just described, uh, basically, we scan this uh, query, we parse it, we try to filter by the label given, that is, employees. Uh, once we scan the label and we start scanning the label, we find all of the employees, we start filtering and basically we're looking for Michael's employees, so we find Michael, we consult our internal store, the Hexa store, uh, for the uh, predicate or the triplet that satisfies the question being asked, and we find all of Michael's employees, which is cool. This is what we've been looking for, right? Now we filter. Now we want to get out all the guys who are uh, older than Michael, or rather, younger than Michael. The first, uh, and then we project, blah, 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 it's just a translation, right? Uh, when we label scan, first, uh, may I remind you, we're looking for Michael's <coughs> employees. We find, in the first scan, we find this guy, uh, we don't need Jim, so we drop him. Uh, but then we find Michael, so we dive into Michael because it satisfies the filter, and then we expand the relationship, find all, all, of, the, all of his employees, and then we scan them, and then we start filtering them. This guy, Jim, gets dropped again because he's younger than Michael. But then we find Kevin, and Kevin is older than Michael, so this will be projected back to the user, to the asker, uh, as the result. That's the demo, demo, and I have two minutes. That's right on time, barring any questions. But I'm, I will be happy to fend off any questions later. Who has a question? Yes. Um, okay. So first, I fetched back the entire graph. This was what I did here. I'm just bringing, that's like select all, if you will. Uh, so I got back Ree's graph. Let's just zoom out a little to get a sense of what's happening here. Uh, the next query is going to add a bunch of nodes. We've seen that earlier, right? So that's nothing new. These nodes represent countries. And now we're going to add uh, no, uh, sorry, edges between the new nodes and people. These edges will represent trips to, these, to the country, but there's a, a label, uh, or rather an attribute, on each one of these trips, whether it's a business or pleasure edge. Here we go. Now, everything looks like a big old spaghetti bowl. Whoa. Very nice. Now, let's see how we can leverage that information into turning something very mundane into something amazingly wicked. You can actually ask, uh, let's see, who are Rui's friends? And this is where you get to play big brother sort of thing. Uh, who are Rui's friends who also visited the same places as, as Rui has? And this is the query. And you can dive into the details later, of course, of why it's written that way. But you can see, what you can see here is basically, it's, it's a search, right? And we get this little graph here going like Japan and all the guys who visited the same places as, as Rui. But we can also look um, at people who only traveled on business uh, pleasure, and this is basically filtering according to the edges properties or attributes, which is pretty cool too. So I've got Roy here, and I've got Ori, and both of them are have traveled on business uh, to here, and then Tal uh, traveled on business to Japan. This I can actually take and try to match the top globetrotters from everyone who's ever traveled for any purpose. And this is where the demo is broken, so sorry, I told you. But um, besides the black dots, the black holes, uh, you can see that the result that gets returned is an unconnected graph, of course, there's no connections right here, but it's a sort of a ranked ordering and an aggregate on people, a top end query. So this is just like a very brief 
dive into what a graph can do and how we do it with Redis. It's still uh, uh, a young project, but one that's very promising. We're very, very, very excited about it. Some of the features that you've seen today include multi-hop, which is the ability to ask questions about remotely connected nodes in the graph, starting from one and maybe wherever on the graph. You can do aggregations like I've just shown you uh, in group buys. You can do projections. You can do orders, these things. Lots of good stuff hiding there. Uh, the benchmark is also pretty impressive, if you believe benchmarks. Um, but Ray claims that, the, that he, this is, these are the numbers he got, and I believe him. Uh, the roadmap is also just a glimpse. We're going to do an integration with with uh, Tinker Pops Gremlin uh, indexing using uh, our uh, Redis search engine, uh, extending the query language, of course. And if you have any feature requests, <laughs> issues, bugs, want to read the documentation, pitch into the effort. This is where you can find the project and links to everything, documentation, GitHub. Uh, Rui's details are up here. Uh, this is the guy who made it. Like, I wish I could thank him here in person, but like, uh, I'll just thank you guys for listening in. Thank you for coming to Reddit's Conf. Thank you for being here. See you next year. Thank you, guys. <laughs>